Conversation from a Night in November, a Narrative. This piece was born on November 23rd, 2020. It was typical that I was running a little late. I parked my car, put 30 minutes on the meter, and carried artwork in to Dan Collison, a man I hadn't known for no more than two minutes prior. I bring the art in. Dan begins to do his thing in setting up the area where the photography would take place. He places the paintings in position and begins to do what photographers do. He begins to take photos, missing no angles. When finished, he mentions conducting an interview and filming it. During this interview, which revolved around who I am and not solely about why I am an artist, I learn again that God puts me in the right space in his time and that I was not as late as I thought. I was right on time. Uh, As an artist, I'm I'm an abstract artist. I gravitate towards that because it fits my, the way my mindset and my my mojo or my personality is. You know, it's one of those things where I, I think I'm a a wild child in a sense. My spirit is like out there and free. Uh, And I can paint realistic work, but that's too confining for me. Just opening my eyes and seeing what's going on out in the world and feeling what I feel and what energy I absorb from what's happening, that feeds me. Or it could be something as simple as throwing on a record. It could be from Chopin uh, to Ice Cube to (laughs) to whoever. That's, and everything in between, whatever I feel is is what happens on the canvas. We learn quite a bit about humanity when put among like-minded humans who see things through the same lens. That lens of everyone deserving the rightness of their lifetimes. We learn when humanity is done well, the darkness isn't as dark anymore and hope isn't just an adjective but a tangible thing grounding us when we often want to fly away into the ether to get away from the chaos. As a result of this equally enlightening and uplifting meeting with my human brother from Michigan and Minneapolis, conversation from a night in November was born. What I want people to take from this is that this artist put himself into this thing, right? Each piece of art that I paint, you know, I put the signature on the top left spine, my latest work. And so that's because that's where my heart is, on the top left half of our bodies, right? So that's where I put, that's where I paint from. I think it's extremely important for each and every artist to say, hey, this is what, this is what I believe in. This is what I'm gonna talk about in this moment. This is what's going to help humanity out. If it's just an inch, that's great, because a collective inches is a mile, right? That's all we need. And, and be brave enough to do that, right? That's like being an artist. You can't be a, you can't be a chicken artist. That's tough. You can't be an unbrave artist. That's like an oxymoron. You know, sometimes if you don't want to speak up, why are you even doing this? Go, go do something that's non-artistic. <laughs> you know, because that's pretty weak to me. Uh, that's like wanting to play football. I don't want to lift a weight. The words rising to the fore after the conversation were pain, joy, love, humanity, and peace. In short, the conversation began as a talk on art but evolved into one that covered the murder of George Floyd and subsequent love risings to the healing of Minneapolis, what that will all look like in the new normal once we get beyond the pandemic and our place and part in it. For me, It was a much needed conversation on this night in November. The painting contains a lot of red. This reminded me of the pain and anger that many felt during the love risings. I stood on Lake Street, Minneapolis on one night and University Avenue in St. Paul the next, taking in the energy of what was happening. What I saw was red emanating from the multitude of bodies hurrying about 
The blacks and deeper blues are indicative of that night of our conversation in downtown Minneapolis. Due to the pandemic, nothing blocks the blues and blacks of the night other than the street lamps exposing barren streets and corners. The yellow represents freshness of life and hope of the conversation. It also serves as part of the sun that resides at the bottom of the painting with the promise of rising through everything above it. The orange serves as a transition and connection between pain and life. The transition in realizing that to get beyond the pain, one must have hope. The lighter blues is the airy peace that despite the times exists and can exist between random humans just having a conversation and making a connection. Lastly, the circles are symbols of life. The two central forms are Sienna and Tope, Dan and I, sitting amongst it all having this conversation. Needless to say, it lasted well beyond the 30 minutes I set aside when I parked. This conversation was well worth the time and much needed that night in November.